Welcome to Tech Talks Lecture 121, Designing with ALM7805 One Amp Regulator. An LM7805 DC power supply converts a high voltage AC source into a stable regulated 5 volts DC output. It is ideal for hobbyist projects and embedded systems like the Arduino and other microcontrollers that require a consistent 5 volt DC supply. The design uses a transformer, a rectifier, a smoothing capacitor, references a bulk capacitance, and an LM7805 regulator itself with smoothing output capacitances. Selection of the ACN VN must be set to 2 volts higher than the 5 volt DC regulated output thus aids in the selection of the step-down transformer that will be chosen. Usually a transformer that steps down 120 volts AC to 12 volts AC will work, but you could go as low as 9 volts AC. Here uh, we're going over the electrical characterization of the Micro A 7800 series positive voltage regulators. These regulators are industrial standard and they are like the LM7508 family series or 75 LM7500 series. There are three terminal devices. Each device has an output current up to 1.5 amp, internal thermal overload protection, high power dissipation capability, internal short circuit current limiting, that is if the the output gets shorted to ground, it'll shut down. Output transistor safe area compensation. As you can see, it's a TO220 package where the uh, pin one, looking down on the device, is input, pin two is common, and pin three is the output. They have a, an associated family of voltage integrated voltage regulators for a wide range of applications. I have 5 volts to 24 volts, made by Texas Instruments. Here is the uh, silicon schematic of the, inside the chip. We won't be going over that. Now we have some thermal data with relation to the package, the TO220 package. This is the one we're interested in, the 19 degrees Celsius per watt. And that will help us determine if we need a heat sink or not. You can use Celsius or centigrade. Centigrade is an older term, and today most people use Celsius. Here is our uh, positive voltage regulation testing uh, parameters. And these are the parameters used to test the operation of this device, to do a characterization of the device. And uh, we'll just touch on a couple of them. Uh, the output voltage from 7 volts to 20 volts will t uh, range from 4.8 volts, typical 5 volts, to a high of 5.2 volts. And that would be at 20 volts at 25 degrees centigrade. The input regulation needs to be 7 volts. Remember, 2 volts above the output to 25 volts or 8 volts to 12 volts at 25 degrees centigrade and this would be the, the amount of the voltage and how much it will vary in millivolts per that as a ripple rejection you know to help you with your filtering cap and the output regulations as the current changes from 5 milliamps to 1.5 amps at 25 degrees centigrade that's how much the voltage will vary as the current changes has an output resistance of 17 ohms, 0. Point, sorry, 017 ohms, not 17 ohms. But as you can see, these are important parameters for your design as you're using it to build a power supply for whatever project you have. That's it for the characterization. Here's the diagram of the power supply that we'll be uh, utilizing. The input voltage, is 230 here on our schematic diagram, but we'll be using 120. It steps it down to 9 volts, 1 amp AC. This is our symbol for the transformer. 
It's a high sinusoidal waveform in. Out of it is a 9-volt sinusoidal waveform out. goes into the rectifier, the bridge rectifier or uh, full wave rectifier, which we'll show you uh, in a little while of how it acts like a uh, traffic cop and directs the pulse of the voltage. Here is our bulk capacitor, our filtering ca cap. And this is a high frequency cap. This will be an electrolytic cap. This will be a ceramic cap. This is the, our bulk capacitor input for filtering. It takes the uh, unfiltered rectifying output and uh, makes it into a smoother DC with a ripple on it. Here's your 7805. That takes the uh, VN, which will be 9 volts, ground, and V out, which will be 5.1 volts, plus or minus 5%. And then you have your output filtering, which is just a final filter to help keep it steady. And then you have your 5 volt out at 1 amp. Okay, looking at our schematic of a power supply, the first part is a transformer, has a primary and a secondary. It steps down the voltage from 120 volts peak to peak to 9 volts AC peak, which is actually 18 volts peak to peak. That makes it have a turns ratio of 6.67 to 1. And that's all, I mean, that's practically all it does. This steps down a voltage to something we can manage and handle. The next section of the power supply is the full wave rectifier. And as you can see, it takes the peak to peak input AC voltage and forward biases on the positive, diodes like one in three, and causes a positive peak to come out. Then on the negative, uh, pulse of the peak and four biases uh, uh, one and three two and four and so this being diode one diode three diode two and diode four and as you can see it creates this ripple of output consistent peak voltages this is, these are all nine volts that's why it's 18 volts peak to peak but these are 9-volt peak pulses. And it just continues to do that over and over and over again. That's it. The third part of the power supply is the bulk capacitance. It appears right after the full wave rectifier, or bridge rectifier. As you can see here, this blue, light blue line is your positive peak of the sinusoidal N. And it is half of the voltage that the sinusoidal peak-to-peak -peak voltage was. Here's the negative side of that sinusoidal voltage. And again, the positive side. And it just continues to go. As that, fil as that filters through the capacitor, charging and discharging, the time constant of the charge rate of the capacitor is much larger than this bandwidth or this wavelength of the 120 hertz ripple. It's 120 hertz ripple because it's 60 cycles in and it's times two, making 120. So you have the small ripple of 120 hertz. As we can remember looking at the electrical characteristics, it had a 120 hertz ripple rejection. This would feed and in also into the, this would actually be an electrolytic capacitor, 470 microfarads. And it feeds into a one, uh, 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic cap. The ceramic cap is for spurious uh, spikes coming down the line, and it just shorts all that to ground. This will feed right into the LM7805 or the Micro A7805. It will regulate it and, and uh, output a nice, smooth 5-volt DC out. Okay, now we're going to start with our PTC MathCAD to see if we need a heat sink for our 7805. And we'll be calculating the power dissipation, PD, using the formula PD equals VN minus V out times the current. 
uh, which will be running at the maximum current that 75 can operate at 1.5 amps. Our VN is 12 volts. Our V out is 5 volts. Our I out will be 1.5 amps. This is uh, the uh, 12 minus 5 is 7, meaning the requirements of being 2 volts higher than the voltage output. That's one of the reasons why I picked 12 volts. So we, we calculate the add out using Ohm's law, uh, power equals volts times current. We get 10.5 watt. Now we go to our character, electrical characterization sheet of our 78, 100 series positive voltage regulators. We find out what the um, thermal package data is, and we see that the theta for the TO220 case, which we're in, is 19 degrees Celsius per watt. You can use Celsius or centigrade here. Centigrade is an older term, but Celsius is the more modern preferred term. So it's 19 degrees Celsius per watt. So that, that gives us this right here. Now, uh, you may wonder why our answer isn't uh, Celsius when we had a watts unit component. Well, we, we do unit reduction. We know that the, uh, the theta JA is units are uh, Celsius per watt. And when we multiply that to PD, the watts cancel out, leaving uh, Celsius only. So as you can see here, this watt cancels this watt, leaving Celsius. So we take the delta T, PD times uh, theta JA, which is 19 times 10.5, and we get 199.5 degrees Celsius. So we need to determine if we need the heat sink. Now we know that from our spec sheet here that this 7805C's operating temperature Let's see, the output, uh, temperature coefficient and output is from 0 degrees Celsius to 125 degrees Celsius. So we can't exceed 125 degrees Celsius or it will shut, go into thermal shutdown. So, so we're going to calculate what we're dissipating. We know that we're, we're already at 199.5 degrees Celsius. We're going to take an ambient temperature room at 40 degrees Celsius and add that to the operating temperature dissipation in the uh, junction on the uh, regulator. That comes out to be 239.5 degrees Celsius. So we know and we can see that the, we've exceeded the maximum operating temperature for this device, which is only 125 degrees Celsius. So we're going to use a heat sink to dissipate this heat better. And so yes, the answer is yes, we must have a heat sink on this device. Okay, that's it for the MathCAD, and uh, we'll continue. Okay, uh, right after the 7805, the output, you have to go through one more filtering stage, C3, C4, as you see here. They're just for additional filtering and to route any spurious signaling coming down. That, that's the end of this lecture. We, uh, there's a couple things to remember I'd like to point out. To minimize heat and improve efficiency, use the lowest possible input voltage that still meets the minimum requirement, typically 7 volts. That's 2 volts above 5 volts. The uh, uh, electrical characteristic sheet said it was 7 volts. I said 9. That was my mistake. Low current, the LM7805, can typically supply up to 1 amp of output current, but this uh, requires a sufficient heat sink. Without one, the thermal protection will shut down the chip. If you go much above 1.5 amps, if you go above 1.5 amps, the thermal protection is going to kick in. So you need a heat sink. Component placement is important. Place the input and output capacitors as close as possible to the LM7805 pins to maximize their efficiency. Also, safety. The LM7805 has a built-in thermal and short circuit protection. The whole family does making it robust against overloads. Okay, that's the end of that lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to select the like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thanks.